folks, this is, uh, this is the moment where we, um, each year, it's a great privilege to get to hear from a few people who have walked a road that's uh, foreign to a lot of us, but it's, it's what Challenge is all about. So I'm going to ask you all, if you'd be so kind as to be seated and uh, give us your attention. We've got a few very special people we'd like to hear from this evening. So again, if I can just ask for a little bit of quiet in the room. We'll have Velvet Corporation back on stage very shortly. But right now, we're joined by Challenge sibling, Challenge Ball Committee member and friend, Jess Walsh, who's going to ask for your time tonight while she shares her story and the impact Challenge has had on her family. Jess, please welcome Jess to the stage. Good evening everyone and once again welcome to the Challenge Ball. My name is Jess and my family and I have been involved with Challenge for 24 years and my sister Sarah was diagnosed with skin sarcoma in November 1998. I've started to write out my speech, I'd written out my dot points, I had of the moment that it meant something to me and my family throughout Sarah's journey with treatment and times that we had with challenge or because of challenge, because there were many. But before I put everything together, I sent my mum a message asking her friend, Kim Romas, that she thinks I shouldn't do or times I just don't remember. And then she sent me this piece that she wrote in 2001. And as once I read this, I decided that perhaps this needed to be what I say tonight. The next little bit is from my mum's point of view. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sarah Jane was born Monday, the 18th of April, 1983. To me, Sarah was a beautiful baby, but don't we all think that about babies? Sarah brought a rainbow of colour vibrancy and energy into our lives. The things she did were just everyday things, but to me, they were amazing. I remember it didn't seem long before she was singing all the latest songs on the radio. Her favourite was Walking on Sunshine, which she always seemed to do throughout her life with a beautiful smile on her face. Sarah became a big sister to Jessica on November 12th, 1988. It was on this same day, 10 years later, Sarah was diagnosed with human sarcoma, a form of brain cancer. All I could think about was some 10th birthday for Jess. It was a Thursday. It was a Thursday when the doctors told us that Sarah had a tumour. She had hits in four spots and in less than 24 hours, Sarah had to decide if she wanted children. That day, we went from one hospital to another as the doctors wanted to start chemo right away. Sarah got infections after each, other, after each chemotherapy session. So we seemed to be in hospital every fortnight. We met David Rogers from Challenge in December 1998, and at the time, we thought Dave was Challenge. But not long after that, we learnt he had a great team behind him and what a team it was and continues to be. One day, while Dave was visiting all the kids in the hospital, he stepped in for me to hold Sarah's hand when she had her first natural gastric tube, as I couldn't handle it. He was a tower of strength for both of us. It was this same day that Jess went on her first challenge camp. Sarah had surgery in May 99 to have a rib removed, as at the time, they said that was the primary site. It was hard seeing her in so much pain and too scared to move. Sorry, pages won't lift. <laughs> in July 99, we were fortunate enough to have just come back from a holiday in Queensland, thanks to the challenge as they had given it to us. It was great to see Sarah so happy. But on her return, Sarah had the doctor's appointment and it was then that Sarah had told the doctors and I that she didn't want any more chemotherapy. She just had enough. Sarah had 18 months of monthly doctor's appointments and scans and in that time, nothing showed up. During those 18 months, 
She made up for the time she lost with her friends. They referred to her as the party girl, but she just lived for the day and enjoyed it. It was December 2000 that I had noticed she was walking with a bit of a limp. Sarah had said, one of her friends had said the same thing. I mentioned it at the next doctor's appointment and they did a bone scan, which showed up two spots. Sarah wanted to have a normal Christmas. We also had family over from Ireland, so we didn't tell anyone. An MRI was done just after Christmas and confirmed the bone scan. The cancer was back. Sarah didn't want chemotherapy, so radiation was the go. You think and you assume doctors know when things are going to happen, but in Sarah's case, they didn't. They said that she shouldn't have made her 18th birthday in the April, but she did. In May 2001, we found out she could have the seizure at any time. So I finished work so we could spend time together and do the things she wanted to do. Sarah's last time in hospital was the 17th of August and we were told she wasn't coming home. But again, she proved them wrong. And it wasn't until Monday, the 27th of August, 2001, that Sarah passed away. Throughout her life, and especially during her treatment, Sarah had an amazing way of communicating with her eyes, and she had the most beautiful smile. Thanks, Mum, for sending me this. My sister Sarah was my favourite person in the world, even if she didn't always think the same of her little sister. I'm turning 34 next month. Sarah was only here for a third of my life. And although it would have been nice to have her here for a long time, I was happy for her to be here at all. The last three years of her life were the hardest, and at time, it just felt like it went forever. But people like Dave and organisations such as Challenge do make it easier. They give you opportunities to make memories you may have never had the chance to make, such as trips to Queensland, visits to their houses, camps and family days to attend, tickets to the Olympics, the footy, or even just to the movies. Also, the chance to meet your favourite celebrities and football stars. For me, or should I say for my dad, that was Richo. I don't think anything would ever top that for dad. The day Sarah passed away, Richo actually called our house and dad hung up at him thinking it was a prank. But, dad, but Dave had actually set it up for Richo to call to speak to Sarah. He just called a little too late. We have actually been a part of Challenge longer as volunteers than we were as a Challenge family. But that has only grown our love for what the Challenge team do behind the scenes to make the family's life fun and a little easier while going through this extremely tough journey. Nights like tonight help Challenge to keep doing what they do best and you being here to support them is appreciated so much. Last thing I will say is you would never wish anyone to go through what we have been through, but one good thing to come out of it that is our lifelong friendship with Dave and Challenge. Thank you and enjoy your night. Thank you, Jess. Thank you for sharing. It takes enormous courage to get up here and share a story like that, but I think we're all the richer for it. Go on, you, yeah. There was a surprise to Jess's table too. They didn't know she was speaking tonight, so thank you, Jess.